I'm Brad. This is DIY Wouldn't You. And today, we're working on this accent wall. Doesn't look like an accent wall? Oh, there's that accent wall. Wallpaper is a project that anybody can do. Luckily, I have a Steve with me. What's a Steve? This is a Steve. Now, Steve's been doing wallpaper for 40 years, so he's going to help me out because he knows more than I do. Now the rest of the room is going to be a different color than this color right here. So, before we get started with the wallpaper... Uh, before we put the wallpaper on the wall, we're going to use a sizing or a primer. Well, the reason you prime a wall is you need to make the wallpaper stick to the surface and you need to seal the surface so that when it's time to remove the wallpaper, you don't tear the wall up. We'll probably be using two coats of acrylic latex primer. This is a low VOC as a volatile organic compound, which means it's less hazardous to use. It's a low odor, so it's not gonna stink up the whole house. Now, as you can tell, I'm working at my house because my son is screaming in the background. There's all sorts of places you can get your wallpaper. We got ours at a local interior decorating store called Pops Incorporated in Winston-Salem, which is close to where we live. And on the wrapper for the wallpaper, uh, it gives you the pattern number, the batch number, so that you can make sure that your print matches. It'll actually be slightly different color. So you want to make sure that you have all the same lot number. And then it, it explains the design repeat. It gives you a measurement on pattern from start to finish. So you can lay it out and find your pattern repeat. Now Steve took measurements on the wall and the reason for that is you want to add four inches overall, two inches to the top, two inches to the bottom, so that if you cut the whole wall out at one time, if the wall is, is out of level, you won't run out of paper from one side to the other. We've determined that we need six pieces. Uh, the wall measures seven feet and eight inches in height. So I'm going to add four inches overall, so we're cutting the pieces eight feet. It's a, a denim pattern, and the pattern is a little hard to see, but we've determined that it's a straight match. Bah! Some wallpaper just has a random match, which means that uh, you can hang it anyway, and it doesn't really have to match the piece next to it. There are two different kinds of matches. You have a straight match, which is your pattern just matches straight across to the next piece. There's also a match called a drop match and your pattern will actually drop down and uh, the distance that it drops down from piece to piece can vary depending on the print. So if you can pick out something on the paper that you can identify like a little darker place, then that next piece you can run it off and find where that matches. You can kind of see some other areas that you can identify that match. Being that Steve does wallpaper, we're actually going to use something called a pasting machine to paste the wallpaper. If you look on the label though, it explains that you can paste the wall to hang this wallpaper. If you're not a wallpaper hanger and you're just doing this as a DIY project, then that's great. You roll the paste on the wall and then you hang your paper on top of the paste. If, if you're going to paste the wall, what you need to do is measure where the paper is going to hit and then paste out maybe a couple inches beyond that so that you make sure that you've got the whole area covered. My project right here is so easy that you and your wife can do the whole thing without a single fight. <laughs> That's a good one. You can get wallpaper paste at any local hardware store at Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, I know Steve gets his at Sherwin-Williams because he gets a lot of stuff through them. And gets a little bit of a contractor's discount, if you know what I'm saying. You just say stained glass. Now, we're using a pasting machine and we have a table set up here for our wallpaper. But if you don't have a pasting machine, you can use a bucket of paste and a roller and a pan. Just when I think I'm over you, I relapse. And if you don't have a table, you can just lay plastic or a drop cloth out on the floor and paste your paper on that. So we're going to let the paste set up a little bit to get tacky and absorbed into the paper some before we hang it. You came inside all right. 
Some tools that definitely come in handy are a bristle brush, a plastic smoothie, a putty knife, and a razor knife to trim. I'm going to go ahead and get the next piece up beside this one before I drop the bottom down. That way we can make sure that everything's lined up, make sure we're working our way across the wall with the paper hanging plumb. Now this pattern is a little bit obscure being that it's a denim style paper, but if you can find a couple little spots, maybe the lines going across the paper here, it's a little bit easier to match up. So if you take a step back for a second, there's a couple spots here and here that are lighter that need to be in line with each other. And we look pretty good, so we'll go ahead and work this out. One thing that you're going to want to remember when hanging wallpaper is when you get it up on the wall while it's still wet, there's going to be bubbles and the seams might pucker a little bit, but uh, if you give a little bit of time and just go do something else and come back later and check on it, uh, a lot of those bubbles will be worked out and your seams will be laid down flat. So I dropped the second piece down before working the first piece down. The reason for that is, if your corner truly is straight, we'll drop the second piece down and then work our first piece back to the corner. The top of our wall looked really plumb, so we went ahead and hung the top. But as we're working our way down, we've noticed that we've got about a quarter inch gap between the perpendicular wall and the edge of our wallpaper. So, rather than moving forward, we're going to go ahead, pull the first piece off, overlap it onto our perpendicular wall a little bit up top, the amount that we're going to need to fill the gap at the bottom. And then we'll just trim off at the top. Uh, let's go ahead and check plumb on it one more time just to make sure we're okay. And we seem to be good right there. So let's keep going. As you're brushing, it might pull your seam apart, but it's easy enough to slide it back together. This is where your putty knife and your razor knife are going to come in because you're actually going to pack the paper down along the baseboard with your putty knife and trim with your razor knife. I can see right through you just like stained glass. When cutting along your ceiling line, if you'll flatten your blade out up against the wall more so than angling like this, uh, you reduce the risk of cutting through your, uh, your tape between the wall and the ceiling from when the house was built. When I think I'm over you, I Straight corner. You're going to want to make sure and get all the paste off of the finish of the wallpaper as the paste over time can attack the finish and it can actually make it flake off. Now as we're dropping this piece down, you'll notice there's an outlet on the wall. You can just hang right over top of the outlet, find your corners. And then just use your razor knife and cut right along the inside edge of the opening in the sheetrock. And remember, it's better to cut your hole too small than too big, and your switch plate can't cover it. If you want to, you can flip the breaker to the bedroom. That way you won't risk electrocuting yourself. But then you cut your lights off and it's harder to see, so... Uh, that's kind of up to you. Wallpaper is going to wear a razor blade out quickly, so you're going to want to change it fairly regularly, every one to two pieces realistically, to keep the paper from shredding when you're cutting it. For this corner here, you can lay the paper over onto your door casing. Just cut right along the top. And the paper lays nicely up above your door casing, and you can work your way down the rest of the wall. across your baseboard where it meets a door casing there's always going to be a little corner down here where it's hard to cut and uh, and it's easy to tear the paper right there and you'd have a, a bare spot where you'd actually see the wall behind the wallpaper so your plastic smoothie or something that's not going to tear the paper pack it down nicely across your baseboard go ahead and trim as far as you can across or pull your wallpaper out and take your razor knife and just cut it 
as straight as you can with what you just cut. Or when you lay it down, you can cut this and it ends up with a nice sharp corner. I can see right through you just like stained glass. Just when I think I'm over you. Just come and cut straight down. Pull your paper away. You should have a nice crisp corner there that doesn't leave any wall exposed. You are relapsed. You came in subtle. For this last piece, we're going to want to get an exact measurement from the previous piece to the corner of the wall. And you're going to want to measure at the bottom as well as at the top. Now since I know a paper guy, uh, he's got a straight edge that we can cut the wallpaper with. Um, and the point of that is so you get your measurement from the edge of your paper to your straight edge cut along this edge, and then this edge that you just cut is actually going to go in the corner of the wall, and so you want that to be a nice finished edge. Twelve and a quarter, twelve and a quarter, twelve and a quarter. Make sure that you have a nice sharp blade. Ta-da! Now perks of having a Steve is he can tell you tricks like this that I'm getting ready to show you. P.S. Steve's my dad. So I kind of grew up doing wallpaper, but that doesn't mean that anybody else can't do this as well. Now this is a trick that my dad showed me when you have a door casing like this that runs up close to the wall. Now this corner is going to be hard to trim, so what you're going to want to do, again, Make sure you have a nice sharp blade on your razor knife and you want to unfold the paper all the way down top to bottom. Go ahead and get your top situated where it needs to be. Rest the edge of the paper right up against the wall and stick the paper on your door casing all the way down. And then you're going to take your razor knife, find the edge of your door casing here, and with your finger just beyond the edge of the blade, not touching the blade so you're going to cut yourself. Go slowly so you don't risk cutting into your door casing and don't put too much pressure on the side of it. You're going to cut all the way down, top to bottom. brush. Let your paper lay down smooth right into the corner and you don't have to worry about getting paste all over your brush. Let's talk about the bottom for a second. You've only got about a three inch piece of wallpaper down here and you can't get your putty knife in there to pack it down nicely for you to cut it. Take your pencil, pack your paper down into your corner, draw yourself a line Pull it back, you can see your pencil line. Just trim it with your scissors. And there's your nice finished edge down there against your baseboard in this tight little corner. Being that my dad does wallpaper for a living and I've helped him for half my life, uh, this should be about an hour, maybe a two hour project. For somebody that's never done wallpaper before, maybe about a half a day. You should end up with a great result like this. Now this project, it cost 
about $200. If you have to buy tools, it might be a little bit more, but uh, an accent wall is a great thing to use wallpaper for because it's fairly quick, fairly inexpensive, and it changes the entire look of a room. Now we figured while we're doing wallpaper, we might as well go ahead and do one more project. But I'm just going to watch and let my dad do the work since he's the professional. This is an office space that we've got in our house, and it's just kind of plain. Uh, there's cabinets on the wall and a workspace down below. We thought that this cork wallpaper would look really good to accent in between the cabinets and the countertop. I can see right through you just like stained glass Just when I think I'm over you I really Put it out with your fingernail and push that seam down Nice and tight. I can see right through you just like standing glass. Just when I think I'm over you, I relapse. If this video was helpful at all, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more projects that we're working on, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you back. I'm Brad. This has been DIY What You Thanks for watching. See you next time. That's a wallpaper. Wallpaper? Wallpaper? It's not going to stink up the whole house. You can throw your sponge if you like as well. It doesn't help anything, but it happens.